One of the largest to use the island is the female green turtle. After lumbering up onto the sand at night, she digs a hole and lays 100 to 150 leathery golf ball sized eggs. this exhausting process three times this season and then not again for two years. Nine to ten weeks later, if the warming sun has maintained the conditions necessary for the incubation process, the baby turtles hatch. They are already immersed in a struggle for life that most will not win. Only one in 20 will live to return and lay eggs on the island where it was born. After a year and a half of production for us, and nearly an hour's viewing time for you, perhaps it's time that we each recognize that the reef is a pattern for all nature. It has to be studied in great detail to be understood. It has to be protected if it is to be preserved. And the system can't be disturbed without dire consequences. We should also recognize that man, each individual one of us, is also a part of the overall environment. Not that much different from the least, most set upon member of any of the Earth's species. Tremendous pressures are on all of us, despite our individual defenses.
In man's thousands of generations of development and maturation, he has always thought that he must conquer his environment. Perhaps now we're beginning to recognize that our fight should be to cherish and preserve, not decimate. Unlike our fellow animals, we have the ability to create good in our environment. But we also create many of our own worst enemies. And certainly we don't face easy adversaries. There are few simple problems and no obvious answers. Each decision we make has tremendous and diverse pressures, but they must be faced. Our ability to outrun our problems or bury ourselves in the sand and ignore them is gone. For these natural or man-created threats can destroy us. crab dies that a grouper may live. Or at another time, many crabs sustain themselves on the grouper's vast bulk. There is no pity in nature, nor is there malice. Nature, and science too, are usually not permitted to concern themselves with an individual, but rather with the survival of an adequate number of the species, so that the whole species survives. The survival of the reef, or of our own environment, seems to depend on what we wish as an end product, on the degree of commitment we're willing to make, and on the amount of scientific research that we've fostered. While researching this program, our production team found that a scientist at the Max Planck Institute in Germany was studying the behavior of mated pairs, including ravens, gibbons, jackals, and these shrimp, the Hymenocera elegans, or painted shrimp, which feed exclusively on starfish. By arranging to have specimens of the crown of thorns shipped to the Institute for further experiments, we were able to learn much about the shrimp's possible use as an effective biological control of the crown of thorns. The shrimp's method of attack is extraordinary considering its size. Impervious to the poison of the starfish's spines, the pair maneuvers him into position. Dancing across the underside of the starfish, the shrimp now tamps down the tube feet to prevent any attempt by the crown of thorns to right itself. The shrimp pierces the soft skin of the sea star with its first pair of legs, which carry tiny, sharp pincers. While one pincer is used to keep the opening, the other begins to pull out the internal tissue upon which the shrimp feeds. Research has revealed that one pair of Hymenocera was recently reported on the Great Barrier Reef, so we know that they can live there. 
the questions that remain are whether this rare shrimp can be placed on the reef in numbers adequate to control the crown of thorns. And what are the ultimate consequences to the whole reef system if this necessarily great number of shrimp are introduced into it? But the broader question still remains to be answered. Is the influx a normal occurrence or actually a plague that we must control? If it is a plague, these painted shrimp may be a logical way to control the starfish because they reestablish the prey-predator relationship that is the basis of all ecological balance. For after about a day, the shrimp have reduced the starfish to little more than a jellied mass. So perhaps the introduction of the shrimp to the reef could enable the reef system to return to its normal stability. It sometimes takes a natural outburst like this to remind us that we are not always the omnipotent masters of our environment, but members of a greater natural system. And we, as responsible members of this life society, must respect and preserve the natural order of our planet.